Okay, so obviously there's a lot going on right now. First and foremost, a total collapse of a bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, which unfortunately has already spawned countless conspiracy theories and just outright racism from people online in a way that was shocking even to us. And this is in addition to the fact that this horrific accident has resulted in six people who are currently missing and presumed dead. The only good news regarding this story is the fact that it happened at a time where there was very little traffic on the bridge and the cargo ship was able to alert authorities that it lost power, which caused immediate road closures to prevent even more people from going onto it. But the scale of this catastrophe cannot be overstated. This was an absolutely massive bridge in a heavily populated area that is vital for people's commutes and the economy in the, in the area. Yeah, so before we get into the reaction online to this news, which has reached levels of insanity, conspiracy, and outright racism at levels previously thought impossible, let's talk about the details and the latest updates as of when we filmed this. So at around 1.30 in the morning on Tuesday of this week, a large, gigantic mm -hmm. container ship appeared to lose power and drift directly into one of the main supports of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, causing it to completely collapse in a way that was literally unbelievable when we first saw the videos of it. Yeah. The sense of scale was hard to comprehend, but this was a massive catastrophe. The bridge was over a mile and a half long and hundreds of feet tall, with nearly 200 feet of clearance beneath it. So that's 200 For, feet from the water yeah, to the bottom of the bridge. High enough that extremely large container ships uh, mm -hmm. could safely pass underneath it. Yeah. Uh, luckily, all things considered, the crew of the ship were able to call in a May Day, allowing emergency personnel to block access to the bridge, but not enough time to do a proper evacuation. The rescue efforts resulted in two people being rescued from the water, but six who remained missing and are presumed dead. Yeah, this is where the reality of the situation ends, and the outrageous and disappointing narrative from morons online takes over, because... No sooner had the first images and video hit the internet. L literally within minutes. Yeah. I, I saw this, like, it had just been posted five minutes earlier, and the replies were already filled with the dumbest fucking shit I've ever seen. Yeah, people started to claim that this was the result of DEI initiatives. Which is literally, it's just the, the latest way They're just saying, to say yeah, they the, the N-word. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason you missed all of the exhausting discourse about DEI, it means diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is a very important thing for an economy that has throughout time intentionally overlooked the talents and abilities of minorities and women. Not that the actual meaning or thought behind these types of initiatives are important to conservatives and racists online, because DEI has literally just become another racist dog whistle, the same way that CRT, or critical race theory, has, or wokeness in general. Just saying, oh, woke because a black person is on their screen. Yeah. <laughs> Those all became terms that people can use online. It's instead a new of just, way to say slurs. Yeah, to, instead of doing what they want to do, which is to just say the N-word. Yeah. This latest tragedy further demonstrates this point, which was already out in the open, considering people would just post a photo of like a black pilot on a plane and say things like, would you feel safe on this plane? So there what are- What do you mean by that? It's not even a dog whistle. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a megaphone. They're just- it's blatant. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty clear that anyone using the term DEI to justify racist views doesn't actually care what the term actually means. It just allows them to say something extremely racist while leaving room for plausible deniability. Yeah. Putting minorities in movies? Woke. Teaching high schoolers about slavery? Critical race theory. Black people flying planes? Well, that's DEI, baby, mm -hmm. and it's gonna get us all killed. And now, somehow, a bridge collapsing as the direct result of getting rammed head-on by a giant cargo ship. That's also, I guess, the result of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is all Pete Buttigieg's fault. Yeah. And gosh darn it, I'm so dang upset. Mm -hmm. People are literally going insane, publicly, on the timeline. And it's incredibly disheartening to witness. Not to mention the fact that disinformation was spreading very very rapidly in the hours and minutes after the collapse with one video from a completely different country where explosions are going off being shared as if it were footage of the bridge in Baltimore with the intent of making people believe it was a terrorist attack. Obviously that footage was quickly refuted with correct sourcing, but the terrorist claim it's still running rampant online despite having 
there being absolutely zero indication that this was a terrorist attack. There's video. We have video. You see the giant ship. You see its lights turning off and on because it is having recurrent power failures. Mm -hmm. And you see it crash into the support of a bridge. And just visually, you can tell that a ship that big versus a support that small, the ship's going to win. I it's did, a really simple as. One of the earlier tweets I saw was it was a, a time-lapsed version of it, so it was sped up. And people were commenting on it as if that were real-time speed. Like, well, it looks like you rammed it to me. Like, j people... Uh, I don't know if they're being intentionally stupid on purpose or if people are actually that dumb. But I mean, the ship did take a very... I don't know exactly how it happened, but the ship... It, somehow in the process of trying to get the power back online, they managed to turn it even more it directly worse, into yeah. the path of the Much support. like the Titanic, yeah. uh, any adjustments after the fact of collision uh, are going to probably make things worse. I'm sure eventually once this is it's going to be very thoroughly investigated, oh, yeah. we'll figure out why that is. But no, I don't think that these people <laughs> transporting crashing. fucking like Hyundais into Baltimore Harbor did this on purpose. So because the, how the fuck would that make sense? The simple fact that the ship is seen losing and regaining power and that the crew also immediately called in a mayday to alert authorities and save lives, that should be enough to show that this wasn't in any way intentional. But people are so broken in this country that everything has to be a grand conspiracy now. And they quite literally don't trust accurate sources, let alone their own eyeballs. It just, it just has to be the work of something, someone, anything. It was either terrorists, or maybe the bridge was built by too many minorities. Uh, this bridge was built 50 years ago. By too many minorities. <laughs> okay. Or maybe it's because the captain of the ship might not have been white or something. I, th these are all floating around, bouncing around in the brains of conservatives, sliding they, around on those smooth brains. I've seen an interesting sort of double think among the racist takes on this, where um, they're saying, like, okay, yeah, this was, this was a woke DEI attack on white Christian America... Mm -hmm. But then also being like, Baltimore is very black, so also they deserved... Like, it, you, both of these things can't be true. They'll find a way. <laughs> but none of these theories have a basis in reality. So we gathered some of the stuff that we saw on Tuesday in the wake of this disaster to kind of get a full view of just how crazy people are acting. And this first one lays the groundwork pretty well because despite the clear difference in loss of life, obviously... As far as footage of something massive collapsing on itself goes, this is reminiscent of 9-11. This is a major structure yeah, completely you, collapsing as a result of something hitting it. You see it all happen. Yes, this is not, not the same, but as far as, like, generationally, for people who are much, much younger than us, like, this is a pretty... It's a pretty horrifying yeah. video, especially the fact, like, you can see cars on there. They're just little dots, but you see them, and you're like, yeah, no, they're that person... Probably dead. Is dead. So the original tweet, months old, asks what modern event is comparable to witnessing 9-11 on TV? With the poster quote tweeting that and adding, I still haven't forgotten the moment I woke up, opened Twitter, saw a major bridge collapse, and everyone started being racist about it somehow. Now, let's dig <sighs> into this mess as coherently as possible, despite the timeline and subject matter. Starting with the early morning hours on Tuesday, when major news networks started their in-depth coverage. Here's one from Newsmax, where the chair of CPAC seemed to blame the disaster on COVID lockdowns, drug addled employees, and lack of infrastructure investments. I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the, and the COVID issues. And you can look at, whether you look at our air traffic controllers, where we have critical mission problems with filling slots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm no expert on what's going on on the seas, but all I would say is, is that uh, if you talk to employers in America, they'll tell you that uh, filling slots with employees who aren't drug addled is a very huge problem. Okay. <sighs> okay, I, I do agree. We should invest more in infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. CPAC. Yeah. We will now be taxing you mm -hmm. to pay for those infrastructure improvement. Mm -hmm. And we should point out here that one of Biden's early wins in office was a bipartisan infrastructure bill that allocated hundreds of billions of dollars to rebuilding America's roads, bridges, energy grids, and other projects. What's wild about this is that in an attempt to call out the Biden administration in the wake of this collapse, South Carolina Republican Nancy Mace complained that there has only been 7,800 bridge repairs in the short time since funding was approved. I don't know, it sounds like a lot, Nancy. Yeah. Obviously work 
to be done, but trying to frame this as a gotcha, that's outrageous, especially when you consider the relative inaction on infrastructure in our lifetimes alone. Yeah, it, it, to, whatever you have to say about Biden, his foreign policy, anything else, they did pass an infrastructure bill that is going to end up worth right. more than a trillion dollars that funds local and state governments to actually fix their infrastructure. And it should be pointed out, this is all completely fucking irrelevant. Yeah. This bridge had nothing wrong with it. It got it's, hit by a cargo it, ship. <laughs> it, was, it, it was taken down by forces of physics that no bridge in existence could ever survive. Yeah. Just saying, but sure. And yeah, not that you didn't see this coming a mile away, but Nancy Mays, she voted against the Biden infrastructure bill. So it is rich so, to hear uh, that from yeah. her. Yeah. And this is all, again, we just mentioned it, but it's hard to imagine any bridge surviving a direct hit from a fucking cargo ship that weighs, no joke, 200 million pounds. I mean, I do think it's fair. The The main video we saw of this is through a very long lens, looking at it from like a couple miles away. It looks away. like a toy. So it, the, it's flattened. You have a very poor sense of scale. There's photos that were taken after the fact, aerial showing like the actual, you get a much better look at the size of the ship compared mm -hmm. to the bridge. And it's just like, yeah, a fully fucking loaded cargo ship moving at even like five miles an hour, just creeping along. Like there is so much kinetic energy behind that that nothing's gonna... It, Hundreds of millions yeah, of pounds moving. You're not stopping it. Yeah, so in this specific instance, infrastructure really wouldn't have solved anything in this exact problem. But, now what could have helped were those floating concrete islands known as dolphins. Yes. Those absorb the impact of a ship before it hits a bridge. Florida's Sunshine Skyway has these because the original bridge met a similar fate around 40 years ago. I remember when the old bridge was still up. They hadn't completely taken it down yet. Uh, now, they're fishing piers. Yeah. Uh, they just took the bridge part out, and the part that connected the bridge, those are fishing piers now. But mm. uh, yes, the new Sunshine Skyway, new. The, the one that was built in my lifetime, Yeah. Uh, they made it very tall and put a bunch of those dolphin things around it so that ships would hit that before anything else. It appears as though the Francis Scott Key Bridge did have some of these, but the ship came in at an angle that rendered them useless. It had like bollards. Yeah. So look, back to the insanity though. Uh, sorry for breaking off on a tangent. Here's Fox News host Maria Bartiromo, who alludes to the fact that this, or future issues like this, could be the result of the quote, wide open border before pivoting to wonder how this could affect inflation while there are literally rescue efforts underway amidst the tragedy. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long, uh, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why have the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. I mean, so, okay, the open border comments are especially infuriating because, yeah, aside from being just blatantly racist, fear-mongering, the workers who were on the bridge doing repairs at the time, those were all immigrants working, uh, coming from places like Mexico and El Salvador, doing, doing hard physical labor in the middle of the night. Six of them are still missing. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, and also it's just like, okay, I, do, I <laughs> like, if the the open border, this is a ship that was flagged in Singapore bringing in international goods. Do you not want international trade, Maria Bartiromo? Is that what you're saying? If also, this was a ship of a, a run by Americans only just moving stuff from like fucking Maine to Baltimore, that'd be okay. Do you not want international shipping? I don't fucking understand what you're saying. Also, I don't understand how the DEI conversation comes into play when you're talking about multinational shipping corporations and... Right. And, it's insane. The, like nothing is coherent. We got to get rid of multinational. We, yeah. are, they're just saying replace what the entire world about? with white people. What are you talking about? It's it's bizarre. And the, the <sighs> specifically more rapidly, honestly, since Elon Musk took over X, but the co like, it's just become completely incoherent. Yeah. The arguments that they're making. Well, they're they not don't even make they're any not sense. arguments. Yeah. It's just. Ugh. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't but... make any sense at all, even at face value, because yes, these are international shipping companies. And, and you do have a few blue check weirdos adding in their two cents, of course, like this guy who claimed that the ship crashed because of diversity, saying, shipping giant Maersk confirmed that the Dolly ship, operated and managed by Synergy Marine Group, 
collided with the bridge. Synergy Marine Group promotes <laughs> DEI in their company. Did anti-white business practices cause this disaster? Buddy, I'm listen, I'm sure Maersk has DEI initiatives. I don't believe that Maersk is applying those DEI initiatives to fucking ship workers who are, I believe, like the internet. I saw some crazy f fact where it's like the majority of all ship workers in the world are like either from India or the Philippines. Uh, uh, th this <laughs> is. It, I don't think any it, white people are applying for like <laughs> jobs uh, working on international also, ships and, also and getting replaced. The, Shut the fuck up. Uh, the, the companies putting these DEI things on their websites are doing the same fucking capitalist pride stuff yeah, that happens it's, in it's, June. They're, doing they're just like, yeah, we got, the, we got the thing on the site that says that we're inclusive. Yeah. All good, right? Hey. But but specifically, like that shit, that's there that applies to people doing computer yeah. jobs. It does not apply to people working on ships. Shut yeah. up. But anyway, not to be outdone, conservative commentator Jack Prilosek <laughs> tweeted a photo of the co collapsed bridge, adding, at least your grandchildren will know you fought racism. What? Yeah. Are these, th these folks are so far off the deep end that we are now struggling to even make sense of the nonsense that they're spewing because it almost, it's, it's incomprehensible to me. What are you saying, Jack? Anyway, things got even worse when people found out that, uh-oh, Baltimore's mayor Brandon Scott, he's black mm -hmm. because of DEI. They immediately labeled him as the DEI mayor, despite having graduated from college with a degree in political science and working his way up through the local government for nearly 15 years, and also being elected by the citizens of Baltimore. I don't know if you've seen Baltimore. There's, there's been a couple shows about it. The Wire, you should check it out. It's a very black city. Also, uh, the idea what? that that someone can be elected and that that's DEI yeah. is insane. Yeah, no, it's uh, voting is DEI. Shut up. But yeah, he's black, so everyone then just started blaming him for the bridge collapse. Legitimately unhinged. Purely just, it's racist. You're being a racist. Posts so unbelievable, that they might as well have just called him the N-word. Mm -hmm. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so, so much worse. Prepare accordingly. What are you uh, trying to say? There? Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. And here's this one from Gateway Pundit journalist Elijah Schaefer. Breaking, mayor of Baltimore speaks out. And it's a photo of Brandon Scott with an afro and the following quote. Dat bridge be closed, yo. What the fuck? Here's <laughs> what? New Jersey GOP Congressman Jeff Van Drew putting the blame on Pete Buttigieg for worrying about pronouns and DEI instead of somehow making this bridge impenetrable. So the bottom line with Buttigieg is that he's worried too much about personal pronouns, worried too much about DEI policies, worried too much about, you know, being the cool kid on the block. Uh, this is not the Department of Transportation and the Transportation Infrastructure Committee is not a social committee. This is about actual infrastructure and getting things done. And again, look, I, I think that Pete I should think, be doing a, a much better job yeah, on a lot Pete of different Buttigieg things. Pete sucks but, at his job, but that job description does not include making all bridges invincible. Yes. That's just not, there's nothing that... Also, they, they, were, they were like critiquing him for not being like on top of it while he was already being flown yeah. to the site. Insane. Anyway, but, but there then was, there was yeah. Florida Republican candidate Anthony Sabatini who tweeted the video of the bridge collapse and simply added, DEI did this. And they, there were plenty of other examples of batshit insane theories and straightforward racism in tweets that we saved but have since been deleted. Mm -hmm. Maybe because the authors of those tweets were forced to do the slightest bit of self-reflection and realized, hey, maybe this is fucking racist. Maybe, what is this thing I'm feeling? Is it shame? Is it? No, it couldn't be that. It no. Could, it's probably everyone else that's wrong because they're all DEI. My favorite one was uh, someone had a brilliant conspiracy theory that um, the the woke left did this because the bridge is named after Francis Scott Key. Yes. And this way, they can get a new bridge named after like um, I don't know. Uh, there was someone there was, someone DEI related. Probably. There was one. I can't remember who, so I don't want to say it was like a politician or someone, but it was it was a blue check, so honestly, it could be anyone. Yeah. But it was like, oh, now they're going to rename it the George Floyd Bridge or something. It's just like, they're just flaunting their racism directly in the open. 
It is honestly insane. But you know, this definitely all could have been prevented if Sydney Sweeney's gigantic knockers were piloting the ship. Yeah, imagine. Wow. If she was there, it wouldn't have gone down like it did. No. So just switch the Mark Wahlberg quote and put uh, attribute it to Sydney Sweeney talking about this bridge collapse. Yeah. And uh, if Sydney Sweeney and the kids her, have their own 9/11, her large uh, anti woke knockers had been on that ship, it wouldn't have gone down like that. It's true. Uh, anyways, for its part, the Biden administration has committed the full force of the government to assist in the reconstruction of the bridge and removal of debris. Here are some of the statements by way of CBS News. President Biden said Tuesday that he believes the federal government should pay for the entire cost of the reconstruction of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, which collapsed when a container ship crashed into it early Tuesday. It is my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge, and I expect the Congress to support my effort, Mr. Biden said in remarks from the White House, adding that he plans to visit Baltimore as soon as he can. To the people of Baltimore, I want to say we're with you, the president also said. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg said in a social media post Tuesday morning that he spoke with Moore and Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, offering the Transportation Department support after the bridge collapse. The Department of Transportation is expected to release emergency response funds. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said the U.S. Coast Guard was on the scene, coordinating with state and local partners on search and rescue operations. I do have one question. Is like, Yeah, no, it's great. They should rebuild this bridge as soon as possible. Um, Shouldn't the, the owners of the, the ship be paying for what they fucking did? Yes. Like, I feel like, I, like it, it's great. Be, rebuild it as soon as possible. But uh, there is clearly a party responsible for this. Yes. And I feel they the, should be held financially accountable. The problem with that is you're going to run into the same issues uh, as with any other insurance company where the Biden administration is, is in, a kind of ba- in, a, in a corner. They either try to go after the shipping company and that takes however long sure. to secure those funds. Yeah. Meanwhile... This infrastructure project is dead in the water, or they front load it, get everything working, get the bridge starting to be re- rebuilt, and then in the meantime go after the company. Sure, I but just as we I, saw, I with, just think it's weird that they no one is even mentioning that. Yeah, it, because I, I feel like politically that's kind of stupid to just be like, all right, our, your taxes are going to pay for a new bridge, and never even bring up the fact that no, it, it, we'll get reimbursed once we sue the shit out of the people that did this. It'll and be get like the, money the, uh, the Ever Given, and they'll just be like, "Oh, not our ship anymore. Bye." That was pretty funny. And they'll just leave, and yeah. then everyone will be like, "Wait, we have this ship with everything on." Actually, what do we it's do? nobody's ship. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, since that story was pretty in depth and took up a decent chunk of the video, we're going to do our ad read here and finish up today's episode with two of our favorite punching bags, Mike Lindell. An old Donnie Trump. Mm -hmm. One is selling Bibles, and the other is having his property taken away from him. Could be either of them. You'll just have to wait and see, because Mm -hmm. we will clarify in a moment. But first, this episode is sponsored by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. You know what I had that was really good this week from Factor? The salmon. 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 Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and use code newsdump50 to get 50% off. That is code NEWSDUMP50 at factormeals.com slash NEWSDUMP50 to get 50% off. All right, back to the news now. And one of these guys is selling Bibles. The other one's getting evicted. And before this week, we would have safely assumed that it was Mike Lindell selling the Bibles and Trump getting evicted. But everything's all topsy-turvy, backwards, upside down. So let's start with my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, who's apparently so broke. How broke is he? So broke, he can no longer pay rent on his warehouses and has been evicted by a local judge. Here's local outlet, the Star Tribune, with more on the deadbeat MyPillow CEO (laughs) who spent so much money on election lies that he can't even run his previously stable and profitable pillow business. 
My pillow is facing a court ordered eviction from a Shakopee warehouse after the property's landlord showed the company owes more than $200,000 in rent. A Scott County judge on Tuesday said she will approve the landlord's request to vacate the property after at least four default notices were sent to the Minnesota based pillow maker over the last six months. The latest eviction notice says the company, headquartered in Chaska, is behind in payments for February and March, owing Delaware-based First Industrial LP more than $217,000 for rent and other charges. My pillow has more or less vacated, but we'd like to do this by the book, attorney Sarah Philo, representing First Industrial, said in a hearing in eviction court Tuesday. At this point, there's a representation that no further payment is going to be made under this lease, so we'd like to go ahead with finding a new tenant. Chief Judge Carolyn Lennon in Scott County said the court would issue the order as soon as it's submitted. MyPillow is still leasing a second manufacturing warehouse and outlet location in Shakopee. The eviction is the latest in a string of financial woes for the company and its controversial CEO, Mike Lindell, who has said he's been drained personally and professionally since he became a national figure spreading debunked claims of widespread election fraud in the 2020 presidential race. Neither Lindell nor lawyers for landlord First Industrial returned a request for comment, and no representative for My Pillow appeared in court on Tuesday. That's uh, kind of strange. Awfully quiet. You usually expect Mike Lindell to have a comment ready he, for any situation. He he said something to Politico, but it was basically like, "We uh, we left that warehouse," and then of course they didn't pay rent on it, which they should have because they had a, a lease agreement or whatever. But they all know we vacated that long time ago. Um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, once the cameras were off, he said something to the effect of, did you know the judge was a lady? A lady judge. It's a DEI coming for my pillow, like I've been saying. First, it was the CRT coming for my pillow. Then it was the woke. Mm, the woke. Now it's the DEI, DEI. all coming for, for my pillow. But let's move over to the king of the grift, Donald Trump. Nobody does it better than Trump, folks, whether it's NFTs, Steaks, water, shoes, universities. The Trump branding always guarantees that you're buying the absolute worst version of something at the highest possible price in order to fund the inevitable legal fees that will result from whatever he's offering or his various other crimes. Mm -hmm. We honestly weren't sure anything could top the ridiculous Trump NFT trading cards, but then he dropped the hottest shoes on the market, the $300 never surrenders. <laughs> then... Just when you think you can't top those shoes, uh-oh, behold, the Trump Bible is born. Just in time for Easter, you and your family could be reading from the only good book approved by Donald Trump himself. Folks, the, it's the Bible. I've read it many, many times. My, I so could, many times. I could tell you my favorite passages, but honestly, they are all my favorite. They, I can't pick just one. Just like I have so many children, can't pick my favorite. Not Tiffany, but I can't. Pick my favorite Bible verse because every verse is so important to me. Donald Trump, the Gospels. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't even tell you how many there are because I love them so much. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, George, Ringo. So many Gospels, and we love them all. They're all in there in the God Bless the USA Bible, the only Bible Sometimes endorsed I, by Donald Trump. I wake up and I just pick up my Bible. I don't even open it. I just pick it up and I kiss it. Mm. I hold it up upside down in front of a church during protests, as you do. And I give it a little kiss. So yes, of course, this is just totally not antithetical to the teachings within the book and definitely not blasphemous in <laughs> any way. Yes, for the low, low price of $59.99, <laughs> you can own the God Bless the USA Bible, which is insane. The God Bless the USA this Bible. This man is begging to be smited. And yeah, of course, the God Bless the USA Bible is sure to become a family heirloom for generations to come and not a relic of a crumbling empire sold by a guy who is the physical embodiment of the seven deadly sins. Yeah. Honestly, just, just watch the trailer. Although not gluttony. He's on that Ozempic. He's looking real slim these days. Sure. Here you go. Here's the trailer. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this. God bless the USA Bible. And it's just very important and very important to me. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many 
It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. Folks, it's the Bible. It's you love it. We love it. I did. I made sure to have them put it uh, the print extra large. So uh, you can Large read it. print Bible. And yeah, with more on this, let's check out the actual store page, which describes the God Bless the USA Bible as follows. Order yours today. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. Easy to read, large print, and slim design. This Bible invites you to explore God's word anywhere, anytime. This Bible has been designed so that it delivers an easy reading experience in the trusted King James Version translation. This large print Bible will be perfect to take to church, a Bible study, work, travel, etc. This Bible also features a copy of Handwritten Chorus to God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Wh which is insane. The this Bible is, has nothing to do with America. This is blasphemy. Yeah, this is I mean, quite literally. Like, is. I, I, I'm we sorry. Put, we literally put just. We put the Pledge of Allegiance in the fucking Bible. Yeah, no, that's not where it goes. That's and not also, where any of this next goes. Next to some handwritten notes from Lee Greenwood. Yeah, no, this is like... I don't know what to tell we, anyone. Like, American Christianity is, it is its own thing at this point. It is, it is fascinating. It is its own missing link. This is something else. You showed this to someone at the Vatican, they'd be like... Awuga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, and the frequently asked questions section of these stores, they're always packed with fun bits of info. So let's check that out. Is this Bible officially endorsed by President Trump? Yes. This is the only Bible endorsed by President Trump. If you were reading a Bible that's not endorsed by me, I'll be very, very sad. I'll be very upset. Also, that Bible that doesn't have my endorsement, it doesn't work. The magic spells in the Bible, they won't work. Your prayers won't be answered. This is the only one that works, folks. <laughs> You're going to want to use it. When you pray to God with this Bible, he's not listening. No. You know, you saw the cover, right? It has an American yeah. flag on it. <laughs> yeah, it looks fucking ridiculous. Just... Sh you sh you would I feel like you should like spontaneously combust if you walk into a church with this yeah. thing. Yeah. If this were all true, you know the biblical shit. Right. This is yeah. <laughs> I mean, this pretty much disproves uh, Christianity. The fact that this man isn't being struck by lightning while straight this moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the guy who's currently like fighting a court case, a criminal court case yeah. against hush money that he paid to a porn star while committing adultery is fucking selling Bibles to Christian I mean, Americans. To be fair, that is very like Old Testament coded. Sure. That's something King David would have done. Yeah. Well, there's also this question, which I'm sure this is an issue with other Bibles, but it's specifically funny in the Trump Bible. What if my Bible has sticky pages? What? <laughs> my brother in Christ, did you jerk off to your Trump Bible? Anyways, here's their tips. Are some of the pages in your Bible sticking together? No worries. This is very common with new Bibles that have gold gilding around oh, the edges of the paper. Yeah, that's why. For your convenience, we have provided links to a YouTube video that does a wonderful job of explaining how to break your new Bible in. Just give it a little... Yeah, yeah you wrap it up like a baseball glove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to want to have this baby loose and ready you to go. put it under your pillow at night. Yeah, uh, yeah. It'd be good to sleep with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then if you have some nocturnal emissions, we have a wonderful tutorial guide on yeah, how to unstick we'll, we'll those pages. We'll get that come right out of that Bible. Uh huh. And if, look, for some reason you're still confused regarding Trump's actual relationship with the Bible, uh, the Midas Touch guys put together a compilation of Trump talking about the Bible. <laughs> it's quite a watch. Uh, so where you go? Two Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite two, dude all the time. Two Corinthians. <laughs> Here's a few clips. From their compilation, it will link to the, uh, the full thing in the description along with everything else from today. Here you go. What well, is there's it? so many things like, you know, uh, you take uh, whatever you want to say. There's so many things that you can learn from it. Uh, Proverbs, the chapter, never bend to envy. I've had that thing all of my life where you're, people are bending to envy. And they're just, it's, 
actually, it's an incredible book. So many things you can learn from the Bible and you can lead your life. And I'm not just talking in terms of religion. I'm talking in terms of leading a life mm -hmm. even beyond a religion. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse that means I a just, lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 3.17. That's the whole ballgame. Where the Spirit of the Lord, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And here there is Liberty College, but Liberty University. But it is so true. It's just so... It's so outrageous. There is like a funny... There was a joke tweet on Twitter like four years ago where someone like speaking in Trump's voice is like, you guys love the Bible, don't you? you? You folks eat that garbage up, don't you? You love the Bible. <laughs> you piggies love the Bible. Anyway, moving uh, on. Uh, we're going to warn everyone ahead of time that conservatives are going to go absolutely feral in just over a week because, uh-oh, a solar eclipse is happening. And they are absolutely going to use this as a way to come out against renewable energy because, since the sun will be blocked, solar farms will see a brief dip in power production. And that might, in turn, put extra stress on the power grid, specifically in the state of Texas. <laughs> Every time now. You can set your watch to it, folks. He's going to do the clap. Now, keep in mind that total solar eclipses are rare events that only happen once every two years or so. And you have to be in the direct path in order for the eclipse to actually fully block out the sun. Even then, it's only going to last for around five minutes before things are back to normal. But obviously, this is going to become a huge sticking point for opponents of solar energy because... Uh-oh, checkmate, this is a problem. Yeah. Local out at KDFW is getting out ahead of it slightly. Here's from their reporting. The organization that manages the Texas power grid said it is taking steps to make sure the state can withstand the loss of solar power during next month's total eclipse. The sun will be completely blocked by the moon and the sky will be dark in the Dallas-Fort Worth area between 1.40 p.m. and 1.44 p.m. on April 8th. A forecast provided by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas shows that if there are clear skies that afternoon, solar generation will drop from about 99% of capacity to just under 8% during those four minutes of peak totality. But even in the hours leading up to and following totality, there will be a dip in solar generation because the sun will still be partially covered between about 12.30 p.m. and 3 p.m. Fox 4 weather meteorologist Dylan Federico said less than half of the normal solar generation will occur during that time. And hey, look, luckily for the rest of the country, we're all not Texas. There are interconnected power agencies that help to bear the brunt. In yeah, a lot this of cases. is why you spread the the, health, the <laughs> electricity burden far and wide. Texas just had to have its own power grid. Florida has Epcot. We've got ERCOT. Mm -hmm. It's our own thing, and you can't touch it. Uh -uh. So yes, get ready for some absolute, absolutely brain dead takes about solar power in the lead up to the eclipse. And, you know, maybe if we get lucky, we'll get a, another picture of Trump staring directly into it. Yeah. Remember that? He did it. They told him not to, but Wasn't the it. bunny there, too? The Easter bunny? I don't know if that was the same time. Wasn't the Easter bunny... Uh, that Easter bunny was uh, the spokesman guy. Sean Spicer? Yeah, he was inside of it. <laughs> I don't know if that was the same picture. There's so many pictures. Yeah. I'm uh, going to keep track of all those pictures. Anyways. Anyway, finally, today... We already have an update regarding the hottest new Twitch meta, butt streaming. It's been banned. <sighs> Obviously, because streamers in the platform are in a constant cat and mouse game of what they can actually get away with and for how long. Uh, for those of you who missed it, uh, streamers were wearing form-fitting green tights that showed off their butts and they were keying out the green to show gameplay footage instead, using their asses as a sort of picture-in-picture -picture display. Uh, creative to be sure, mm -hmm. but Twitch has decided that it's now against their content policies and have updated them accordingly with the very specific language the, to accompany it. They have uh, to have like someone at Twitch that is just constantly, they probably don't because Twitch, that, like, that company's been eradicated yeah, from the yeah. inside, but you would imagine they have someone who's just like, oh God, all right, uh, they're streaming on their assholes now. It's like with- Can we know, get the legal department to write something up that says that? It's like, like with OSHA where it's like, oh, why are there so many rules? And it's like every single one of those rules is written in blood. <laughs> why does Twitch have so many rules? Well, every single one of those rules is written in cum. Yeah. Because people were uh, using this to get viewers and the viewers were jacking off 
and it was making Twitch look like a, a pornographic website. Yeah. Anyway, here's The Verge with more. The latest update to Twitch's community guidelines is oddly specific. According to the update, starting March 29th, content that focuses on intimate body parts for a prolonged period of time will not be allowed. The move is without a doubt a targeted response to the new Twitch meta wherein streamers project gameplay onto a green screened part of their bodies, specifically the breasts or buttocks. The trend was popularized by MorgPie, a creator known for pushing the boundaries of Twitch's streaming policies. Earlier this month, she streamed herself playing Fortnite with the gameplay projected on her butt. During her stream today, she wore a green screen cutout shirt, making her head and chest the only parts of her a viewer could see. Others capitalized on the new meta by projecting gameplay on various body parts, but with today's announcement, such activity will become a bannable offense. I didn't know people were doing it on boobs uh, as well as butts. Mm, yeah. What well, interesting, uh, you know, because we are currently in what appears to be a paradigm shift of butts and boobs. Yeah, that's so, what they, you're playing both sides. Yeah, I wonder which meta was more successful. They have to figure out, now they're going to figure out what exact time frame constitutes prolonged. Yeah. So they can switch it to the boobs. Mm -hmm. And then back to the butt when that's been too long. I'm sure Twitch will have to update these policies. And then they're going to paint their toenails green. <laughs> they show their feet off. Yeah. And then you're going to see the gameplay footage in the toenails. Mm -hmm. And then, before long, we're going to get someone who just puts a camera inside their asshole and projects <laughs> and, and projects Fortnite onto the walls of their cult. Uh, would that be arousing for... I'm sure someone would be aroused by that. It's, uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's inevitably going to happen. Something like that is uh, just yeah. an inevitability. Colon streaming. <laughs> we took things one step further. And then they're going to be like, ha-ha, I tricked you. That wasn't my colon, it was my esophagus. Yeah. And then they're going to sue Twitch, and that'll be the end of Twitch. It wasn't my butthole, it was just me and a friend. We put our hands yeah. together like this, and I stuck a camera in there. Whoa, a You vagina. idiot, you thought that was a butthole? No. Twitch is going to ban people from doing this in their homes. If you're not careful, because of the woke. Anyway, they add that this latest guideline goes into effect March 29th. <laughs> It'll only be a matter of time before streamers figure out a new way to get around it. Yeah. They will. They will. The next meta, new meta coming up. So damn, another Twitch meta bites the dust, though it probably won't be long. We're going to see some new, exciting, horny way to get naked on camera. Yeah. That you can always count on Twitch to come up with creative new ways to make their audience of children you know, they start say that jacking it. The tech space isn't innovating anymore like it used to, but uh, Twitch is proving that that still happens. Yeah. Twitch and their, what I assume is a skeleton crew of people behind the scenes. Yeah, Twitch won't be in business. Um... Yeah. Not a year from now, probably still around. I, but I, that was the prediction was that it, it wouldn't resemble, at least at the very least, wouldn't resemble what it was at yeah. the end of this year. Which I don't uh, want to happen. It's just sad that that's what it's, is happening yeah. industry-wide. It is what it is. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week's episode of News Dump. Uh, make sure you like the video. Please click the like button. Uh, support our sponsors. Click the uh, subscribe button. If you're feeling frisky, Hit that join button to Sub oh. uh, uh, support the show. We got ourselves a member over here. Oh, watch out. Hey, step aside. VIP coming through. They're going to have a top comment down yeah, there. Wow. Highlighted. Uh, so, yes, click the join button if you'd like to support the show. Um, but, again, click the like button. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. And if you somehow missed it, we got Elon losing in court. Mr. Free Speech himself. We got a recent episode of Weekly Weird News. We got plenty for you to watch. And we will have a new episode of Weekly Weird News coming right up very shortly. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.